Once upon a time there lived an old man who had only one son whom he loved dearly. But they were very poor, and often had scarcely enough to eat. Then the old man fell ill, and things grew worse than ever. So he called his son and said to him, My dear boy, I have no longer any food to give you, and you must go into the world and get it for yourself. It does not matter what work you do, but remember, if you do it well and are faithful to your master, you will always have your reward. So Peter put a piece of black bread in his knapsack, and strapping it on his back, took a stout stick in his hand, and set out to seek his fortune. For a long while he traveled on and on, and nobody seemed to want him. But one day he met an old man, and being a polite youth, he took off his hat and said, Good morning, in a pleasant voice. Good morning, answered the old man, and where are you going? I am wandering through the country trying to get work, replied Peter. Then stay with me, for I can give you plenty, said the old man, and Peter stayed. His work did not seem hard, for he had only two horses and a cow to see after, and though he had been hired for a year, the year consisted of but three days, so that it was not long before he received his wages. In payment, the old man gave him a nut, and offered to keep him for another year. But Peter was homesick, and besides he would rather have been paid ever so small a piece of money than a nut, for, thought he, nuts grow on every tree, and I can gather as many as I like. However, he did not say this to the old man, who had been kind to him, but just bade him farewell. The nearer Peter drew to his father's house, the more ashamed he felt at having brought back such poor wages. What could one nut do for him? Why, it would not even buy a slice of bacon. It was no use taking it home. He might as well eat it. So he sat down on a stone and cracked it with his teeth, and then took it out of his mouth to break off the shell. But who could ever guess what came out of that nut? Why, horses and oxen and sheep stepped out in such numbers that they seemed as if they would stretch to the world's end. The sight gave Peter such a shock that he wrung his hands in dismay. What was he to do with all these creatures, and where was he to put them? He stood and gazed in terror, and at this moment Eisenkopf came by. "'What is the matter, young man?' asked he. "'Oh, my friend, there is plenty the matter,' answered Peter. "'I have gained a nut as my wages, and when I cracked it this crowd of beasts came out, and I don't know what to do with them all.' "'Listen to me, my son,' said Eisenkopf. "'If you will promise never to marry, I will drive them all back into the nut again.' In his trouble, Peter would have promised far harder things than this, so he gladly gave the promise Eisenkopf asked for. And at a whistle from the stranger, the animals all began crowding into the nut again, nearly tumbling over each other in their haste. When the last foot had got inside, the two halves of the shell shut close. Then Peter put it in his pocket and went on to the house. No sooner had he reached it than he cracked his nut for the second time, and out came the horses, sheep, and oxen again. Indeed, Peter thought that there were even more of them than before. The old man could not believe his eyes when he saw the multitudes of horses, oxen, and sheep standing before his door. "'How did you come by all these?' he gasped, as soon as he could speak and his son told him the whole story, and of the promise he had given Eisenkopf. The next day, some of the cattle were driven to market and sold, and with the money the old man was able to buy some of the fields and gardens round his house, and in a few months had grown the richest and most prosperous man in the whole village. Everything seemed to turn to gold in his hands, till one day, when he and his son were sitting in the orchard watching their herds of cattle grazing in the meadows, he suddenly said, Peter, my boy, it is time that you were thinking of marrying. But, my dear father, I told you I can never marry because of the promise I gave to Eisenkopf. Oh, one promises here and promises there, but no one ever thinks of keeping such promises. If Eisenkopf does not like your marrying, he will have to put up with it all the same. Besides, there stands in the stable a gray horse which is saddled night and day 
and if Eisenkopf should show his face, you have only got to jump on the horse's back and ride away, and nobody on earth can catch you. When all is safe, you will come back again, and we shall live as happily as two fish in the sea. And so it all happened. The young man found a pretty brown-skinned girl who was willing to have him for a husband, and the whole village came to the wedding feast. The music was at its gayest, and the dance at its merriest, when Eisenkopf looked in the window. Oh ho, my brother, what is going on here? It has the air of being a wedding feast, yet... I fancied, was I mistaken, that you had given me a promise that you never would marry. But Peter had not waited for the end of the speech. Scarcely had he seen Eisenkopf than he darted like the wind to the stable and flung himself on the horse's back. In another moment he was away over the mountain with Eisenkopf running fast behind him. On they went through thick forests where the sun never shone, over rivers so wide that it took a whole day to sail across them, up hills whose sides were all of glass. On they went through seven times seven countries, till Peter reined in his horse before the house of an old woman. So Peter went in, and warmed himself, and ate and drank, till suddenly the dog began to howl. "'Quick, my son, quick, you must go,' cried the old woman." and the lightning itself was not quicker than Peter. Uh, "'Stop a moment!' cried the old woman again, just as he was mounting his horse. "'Take this napkin and this cake, and put them in your bag where you can get hold of them easily.' Peter took them and put them into his bag, and waving his thanks for her kindness, he was off like the wind. "'Come in, my son, and have some food. I have a little dog who will begin to howl when Eisenkopf is still seven miles off, so lie on this bed and rest yourself in peace. Then she went to the kitchen and baked a number of cakes, more than Peter could have eaten in a whole month. He had not finished a quarter of them when the dog began to howl. Now, my son, you must go, cried the old woman, but first put these cakes in this napkin in your bag where you can easily get at them. So Peter thanked her, and was off like the wind. On he rode through seven times seven countries, till he came to the house of a third old woman, who welcomed him as the others had done. But when the dog howled, and Peter sprang up to go, she said, as she gave him the same gifts for his journey, "'You have now three cakes and three napkins, for I know that my sisters have each given you one. Listen to me, and do what I tell you.' Then he lay down by the fire and watched to see what would happen. When Peter knew that he had nothing more to fear from Eisenkopf, he rode on slowly till he came to a small white house. Here he entered and found himself in a room where a gray-haired woman was spinning and a beautiful girl was sitting in the window combing her golden hair. "'What brings you here, my son?' asked the old woman. "'I am seeking for a place, mother,' answered Peter. "'Stay with me, then, for I need a servant,' said the old woman. "'With pleasure, mother,' replied he. After that, Peter's life was a very happy one. He sowed and plowed all day, except now and then when he took his dogs and went to hunt. And whatever game he brought back, the maiden with the golden hair knew how to dress it. One day the old woman had gone to the town to buy some flour, and Peter and the maiden were left alone in the house. They fell into talk, and she asked him where his home was, and how he had managed to come through the fire. Peter then told her the whole story, and of his striking the flames with the three napkins, as he had been told to do. The maiden listened attentively, and wondered in herself whether what he said was true. So after Peter had gone out to the fields, she crept up to his room and stole the napkins, and then set off as fast as she could to the fire by a path she knew of over the hill. At the third blow she gave, the flames divided, and Eisenkopf, who had been watching and hoping for a chance of this kind, ran down the opening and stood before her. At this sight the maiden was almost frightened to death, but with a great effort she recovered herself and ran home as fast as her legs would carry her, closely pursued by Eisenkopf. Panting for a breath, she rushed into the house and fell fainting on the floor. 
but Eisenkopf entered behind her and hid himself in the kitchen under the hearth. And Ironstrong heard and said, Yes, he is certainly calling. We must go at once. And in an instant he had burst open the door, and all three were bounding away in the direction of the voice. When they reached the foot of the tree, Peter said, At him! And in a few minutes there was nothing left of Eisenkopf. As soon as his enemy was dead, Peter got down and returned to the house, where he bade farewell to the old woman and her daughter, who gave him a beautiful ring all set with diamonds. It was really a magic ring, but neither Peter nor the maiden knew that. Peter's heart was heavy as he set out for home. He had ceased to love the wife whom he had left at his wedding feast, and his heart had gone out to the golden-haired girl. However, it was no use thinking of that, so he rode forward steadily. The fire had to be passed through before he had gone very far, and when he came to it, Peter shook the napkin three times in the flames, and a passage opened for a trim. But then a curious thing happened. The three dogs who had followed at his heels all the way now became three cakes again, which Peter put into his bag with the napkins. After that, he stopped at the houses of the three old women, and gave each one back her napkin and her cake. "'Where is my wife?' asked Peter when he reached home. Little by little she faded away, and a month ago we laid her in her grave to hide her sorrows under the earth. At this news Peter began to weep, for he had loved his wife before he went away and had seen the golden-haired maiden. The dream was so real that he awoke at once and changed the ring from one hand to the other. And as he did so, guess what he saw? Why, the golden-haired girl standing before him. And he sprang up and kissed her and said, Now you are mine forever and ever, and when we die, we will both be buried in one grave. And so they were. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel to see the latest videos. Thank you.